Welcome to this video. In this video, I want to do an Easy WP tutorial. Easy WP is the Namecheap WordPress managed service. If you're looking for a managed, let's say that again. If you're looking for a cheap and affordable WordPress managed hosting, then Easy WP is a good solution for you. So if you want to go to, so before I start, if you need any WordPress migration services, migration services you want to move to the cloud you want to migrate your your website to a vps feel free to talk to us just come here under services and you can have a look at the services that we offer so we can migrate your website to shared hosting to vps hosting any that you need if you need control panel installation any control panel feel free to talk to us if you want to go to easy wp just come here just come here and go to easy wp and this is my affiliate link so i will really be grateful if you consider supporting me bizanosa.com slash easy wp will take you to easy wp and you can have a look at the offers that are available so if you come here you're going to see that easy wp is a wordpress managed hosting and it is provided by namecheap so if you look at the pricing, you'll see that for yearly plans, that is the annual plan. And you can see these are very affordable for managed WordPress hosting. If you want a free trial, you'll have to start with the monthly plans and the first month will be free, but that will be the price. So if you're sure that you want to use this for hosting your WordPress, then just go with the yearly, with the yearly plan. In my case, I want to see if I can still get a trial because I had tried it at some point just to see what it's like. So I will see if I can get a trial. But before we even get to starting EasyWP, I suggest that you set up your domain first. What I mean is, if you're going to get your domain from Namecheap, just buy the domain from Namecheap before you even get the hosting here. And then you can go to your dashboard. Let's go to my domains list. I can go to my domains list. So we'll come back here. And under my domains list, let's say I want to use this domain. I'll just come here under manage. So with EasyWP, you can use a Namecheap domain or you can use a third party domain. If you already have a domain somewhere else and you don't want to migrate the domain to Namecheap, then you can use it there. But this is how you need to set up your domain on Namecheap if you want to use it with EasyWP. You'll come here, scroll down. Here under domains, if you scroll down, you need to ensure that your domain is pointed to that name server, Namecheap Basic DNS. Once you change it, make sure you click somewhere there to save it. And then you can now use it with EasyWP. It has to be in the Basic DNS or Premium DNS, whichever DNS from Namecheap you're using. You can go back to EasyWP. And I'm just going to see if I can get the free trial. See pricing. And I'm just going to go with the monthly plan because I want to try the first month. So I will try this one for free. EasyWP starts a monthly. Okay. You can still get the free trial. You will be charged starting from Jan 29th. So I will choose my payment option. And for this, I can add a PayPal account. So just go with the next step. Just add your PayPal account. Let me confirm payment. I don't know why it's not picking PayPal. So it has just logged me in. I think my PayPal is already connected or it's using my balance. But either way, just make sure you select your payment option. Website name, I'll just call this marketing blog. What would you like to do on your website? have a website for business, sell online, these are optional. So I'm just going to pass this. I'm just going to continue, but you can choose any one of these. And domain for EasyWP, this is very important. This is the first step that I set up when you saw me go into my Namecheap domains list and changing the name server. I was doing that for this purpose. 
if I come here under your domain on Namecheap, you'll see that the domain that has the basic DNS is already being recognized by EZWP. If I hadn't done that, the domain would not be visible here. So you need to go back and change the name server so that the domain can be recognized by EZWP. If you have a domain on GoDaddy or any other provider, you can just come in here on domain. And I know most people nowadays use their domains on Cloudflare. You can come in here on Cloudflare. You can go to Cloudflare. So once we've created the site, you can do that. But normally you'll just need to add an alias on your in your DNS records. So you'll get the alias. I'll show you where you can change your domain once our website is set up. So I will continue with my domain on Namecheap. If your domain is not here, you know what to do to get it to show up here. So I'm just going to continue. And then we can pick a theme. WordPress themes. So let's see. I don't really want to use any of these themes, but I can change the theme inside of WordPress because I want to use a different theme. So for now, I'm just going to select that as a default, but I will change it inside of WordPress once I log in. And you can choose plugins that you want to use. Of course, I want this Yoast and I want what else is here. I can use that as well. So the rest I can install within within the WordPress dashboard. I will continue. Review the details. Your website will be live at marketing blog. So that will be my domain. If you chose to go with EasyWP, it will be a long EasyWP link right there. EasyWP domain right there. Your subscription, your subscription will be easy monthly. Yeah, I think you can change this later on in your if you go to Namecheap, we are going to see if we can change that later on your theme and the plugins I've chosen, then I'll click continue. But most of these settings you can change later on. So just go with it and you can change them within the WordPress dashboard for the theme and for the plugins. So just give it time to set up the website. You can see it's creating the website, it's installing WordPress and it's also installing the, the plugins that we chose plus the theme that we chose. Once that is successfully completed, we're going to go into the WP admin WP admin to look at our WordPress. So right now, if you go to your email, the email for your Namecheap account, you will find your username and your password. And that is for the WordPress admin dashboard. You can find that in your email. For now, you can click there if you want to preview the website. Okay, the domain is still being, uh, is still showing up like this because I've just changed it. That's because the domain has not propagated. So as I wait for it to propagate, I can just I can just go in here and do an overview of some of the things that you can do within your, your EasyWP account. Now, instead of EasyWP, you'll find your website here and everything that you need to manage this website is inside here and here. If you click on that, you can see you can reset your WordPress password. It will be emailed to you. You can delete the website. If you no longer want to use this website, you need to delete it. But most importantly, even if you delete the website, you still need to disable you still need to disable your payment inside of Namecheap. So if I come here into Namecheap and uh, let's go to apps. If you come here under apps, this is where you're going to find EasyWP and any other thing that you have from Namecheap, FastVPN, any other app-based services will be here. So EasyWP if you come in here and you click on that, it will take you to EasyWP. If you want to disable your EasyWP subscription, you'll just come here under subscriptions and you can see you have EasyWP. If you don't want it to automatically renew, you'll just disable it from there. So when the trial ends, they won't charge you. Just come in here, come here under subscription and disable it. So let's go back to EasyWP. If you want to add another website, know that that will be like another EasyWP subscription. So if I click there on new website, this will be like another subscription. Do it manually, test and see the subscription will be added. So let's go inside of manage because there's a lot you can do here. Just a recap of that. You can reset your password. You can delete the website if you no longer need it. Manage. If you come here under manage, you can do a lot of managing tasks for this website subscription. So if you want to go to WP admin, you can go to WP admin. If I click on that, it will take me to 
slash WP admin. Now the issue is happening because my domain has not fully propagated, but don't worry about that. That's just an issue of time. At some point it's going to propagate. So for now, let's just continue with all this. So here, what do we have? We have reset and we have delete website. And you can click on that if you want to go and log into your website. And then an overview of the different of your WordPress installation and the server resources that you have. So WordPress right now, 6.0, I think there is a new update. So you, once you go into the dashboard, the first thing you'll have to do is to update WordPress. And then storage, your 10 GB available. So if you just know that when you upload files, you upload images, videos, anything that you upload into your website, maybe you're giving out downloads, PDFs, that will take that space. And this is enough to host any normal WordPress blog. And then the CPU, let's see what we have here under CPU. So this is a CPU load. This is just the load. It doesn't tell you anything about the CPU that you're running. Once you start running the website, you'll see that the CPU load will go up and you can come in here and see the graph for how your website is doing in terms of RAM and CPU. It also tells you how your website is performing generally. And then you can keep your website, keep your website optimized. Let's see, you can add, you can add certain things. So you can review current plan, upgrade plan to increase that. Maybe if your website grows and you start seeing that you're hitting 100% in all of this, you can come in here and upgrade to a higher plan with more CPU and memory capacity. And these are just things you can manage within your WordPress. So if I click on that, it's not going to load yet, but that will take you to your dashboard and you can uninstall themes, plugins as well. And you can also look at the cache, the cache on your WordPress. So which plugins are blocked? Cache plugins, SEO, plug, SEO plugin and blocked plugins. So your plugin, of course, is not blocked. You are able to install that. And here's a list of plugins that are blocked. So if you want to use any of these plugins, then you may need to find a different host because you can see some of these are blocked. So just come in here and see which plugins are here that you may want to use but are blocked on what on EasyWP. So you can see all these plugins are blocked here. They provide their own cache system. Most caching plugins I see are blocked. So you have to use the cache plugin that Namecheap provides, EasyWP provides. And then images and files removed old. So these are things you can do within your WordPress admin. And of course, if you need help, you can contact support. Let's see what else uh, is important here. You can have file databases. If you want to access your website files through SFTP client, you can install an SFTP client like FileZilla, WinSCP, and then you can use that to access your website. And you can give access for a duration of time. Let's click there on access files just to see what options they'll provide. So if I want to send these details to somebody, all I have to do is I will just copy all of this and then send them to whoever I need to manage my website for a period of time. Maybe they are uploading a plugin for me, they are installing something, they are adding certain files for me and they need FTP access to send files into EasyWP. This is also very important because at some point you may buy a plugin and if you buy a plugin, maybe the only way to install it would be to upload it via SFTP. So make sure that all this is something that you remember and most importantly, you can always revoke the access or you can give access forever, okay? Once you choose access forever, then you can you can share with whoever you want to give access to SFTP. So I will revoke that. And then database access. You need somebody to do something on the database. Maybe they're editing some details in your database. You can give them access to your database. So come in here and then give access for an hour and you'll see your username and your password. So if you want to go to PHP My Admin on EasyWP, just go to PHP My Admin. Use the details that you get here to log in. So let's copy and we're going to see if we can log in. 
So the username and then the password. Paste. Go. And I want to save it because I will be coming back here just in a moment. So if you go to your WordPress database, you'll see the database with all the data. Maybe someone needs to come into WP options and change something. Once you, see, you change your URL, maybe something is not showing up. You might come in here and edit that in there. The next thing, let's revoke it. And once I revoke it, let's try to reload this and see what's going to happen. And you can see I don't have access. If I try to log in, it will not give me access. So that's a very useful feature that you have here on EasyWP. So that's under files and databases. SFTP, let me just give you a sample here because maybe you're a beginner, you don't know what to do, how to upload things into your website. Let us see if I can, do I have WinSCP installed? Yeah, I do have WinSCP installed. So this is just a sample, but you can use any file. You can use any SFTP client to access your site. I will click there on new site. If you're on Windows, just use WinSCP. It's the best for that. FileZilla, I think FileZilla supports Linux as well. So I'm going to come here under new site and server. I will copy. I will copy my server details and choose SFTP because we're using SFTP. I will paste and username, copy the username. And I will add the username there and then the password password and then paste and you can see that the port number is the same as that so i will leave that as it is and then i will log in so that i can access my files continue connecting yes i want to continue connecting i trust the server there we go i don't know how i can increase the font here but i will try and zoom in you'll see your wordpress details if you want to upload anything into wordpress you'll just go into wp content you can go into your themes your plugins and download and install anything so you can see i have a lot of themes here that maybe i don't want to use 20 2017 2016 i don't know which one i chose but 2020 2019 if i don't need those i can just delete them okay and it will delete those files if i need to upload anything i can just drag it in there when you're dragging anything in here make sure that you're not dragging any compressed files because sftp will not be able to uncompress it for you so if you want to bring anything in here if you need to bring anything inside here just make sure you're bringing an actual file that is already extracted don't bring compressed files zip files but anyway you get the idea the idea is make sure you're bringing in something that is a file that is not compressed maybe you are installing a new plugin or you're installing a, a theme a premium theme make sure the plugin file the plugin or the theme files have already been extracted have already been extracted and you can just upload them in there so at least now you know how you can manage your files with SFTP. And once you're done, you can revoke. And if the time is, you need to know how long you're giving access for. One hour may be too short. Maybe you can go with 12 or 24 hours and just avoid access forever because this is not good for your security. The same for your database. What else haven't we looked at here? Backups, let's see about backups. You can create backups for your website regularly. You can describe the backup new updates. Maybe you've made certain updates on your website and you just want you want to have a backup of all the changes you've made in case anything happens and something usually does happen. So you can create a backup. Of course, it's going to take some time, but just let it continue doing what it's doing. And once it's done, it will have the backup here and then you have the option to download the files, download the database only, or restore the backup, or you can delete the backup if they become too many. I'd like to know if this is taking space. I'm assuming this is taking space from my 10 GB. So let's just finish. And once it's finished, we can come in here and we can see, but I think those are the files are too small. 
if they were big enough, I believe that they will be taking the space from there. So we've looked at an overview and you know what all of these are for. We're going to come down here. We haven't reached down here. There are certain things I want to show you down here. But let me do an overview of all the things I've done here. Backups. We've talked about backups. You can create a backup. If you want to delete a backup, just come there and delete it. File and databases, you've seen, you can access your files via SFTP. Download and install an FTP client on your Windows computer, Mac or Linux computer and you can access your files using the credentials that you'll get from there. And the same goes for your database. If you need to access your PHP my admin, you can do so. Just first of all, give access and then Click on go to PHP my admin, username enter, password enter, and then you can access your database and edit your database. Analytics. So analytics, this shows you your RAM and CPU usage. And if you're using too much RAM, too much CPU, probably your website is becoming famous or you need to see if you're getting spam. Sometimes you get fake traffic and it eats your server resources. So just think about that. And if you're using too much of the CPU and RAM, you can always upgrade to a higher, to a higher plan. Or you can check which plugin or theme is causing the issue and you can uninstall it. If you need help, you can contact Namecheap support. And then as for the add-ons, you can integrate your add-on here. You can integrate the CDN. So just click on this to see the options that they have, but I will not be looking at this right now. And if you need email, you can always Subscribe to the Namecheap email. It's very affordable. If you need a logo maker, Namecheap has a free logo maker, premium DNS with advanced security features. You can check that there. And these are all products of Namecheap. Overview. So here you can change your domain. So if I click here on domain, I can change my domain to another provider. So you can see here the options have already been added. Ali, Alia, when we were setting up the website, they were not there. So you'll type your domain name and then you can point your domain name to this. What you'll need to do is you go wherever your domain is hosted and then you create an alias record. So you create an alias record with that. So you'll just create that on the other side and then confirm and then you confirm. But if this is something you don't want to go through, what you can do is you can migrate, transfer your domain to Namecheap. So this is an overview for EasyWP. I hope it will help you. The only issue that hasn't, the only thing that is still an issue is I haven't been able to access the website and that's because of DNS propagation. But I hope that's not an issue. You know how to log into your WordPress and add themes, plugins and edit the website as you need to. All right. That's it for this video on EasyWP.